In episode five, Norm and Chet continue to walk around Vault 32 trying to make sense of everything they're looking at. They just can't quite figure out what happened. Eventually, they reach the entrance to Vault 31, and it's even more confusing than before. Because you have a bunch of dead bodies, but it looks like they were trying to get into the vault. And written in blood is a message that says, we know what's in there. They get so freaked out, they run back to Vault 33, and they come up with an excuse on what they were doing. And while they are caught by Betty, it seems like she buys their excuse. That day, though, is election day for the new overseer, and it's down to the council members. So you've got Betty, Woody, and Reg. But as most people are casting their vote, Norm decides to go look into the records, and what he finds is a little interesting. It's a record of the intervolt trades implemented for the distribution of personnel. And what it shows is every single elected overseer from Vault 33 came there from Vault 31. They even have a saying about it, when things look glum, vote for somebody from Vault 31. Although Norm didn't realize it was this bad. What's even weirder is the fact that 32 did the exact same thing every time they elected an overseer who came from Vault 31. He goes and tells Chet about this discovery, and Chet doesn't think it's weird because everything they know about Vault 31 is that it's just better. Luckily for them, they have somebody they can ask about this, Steph. Steph and her new baby are living with Chet, and they decide to ask her, hey, what's the difference between our vault and Vault 31? Because as it turns out, Steph came from Vault 31. And the only thing she tells them is that the mashed potatoes are better. All in all, though, she's pretty cagey about the whole thing. The election goes down, and Betty, who comes from Vault 31, wins by a landslide. And later in the day, she has a vault-wide meeting. She tells everybody that she's been in discussions with the overseer from Vault 31, and they've decided that they need to repopulate Vault 32 after what the Raiders did. So some people are going to stay in Vault 33, but some are going to go to Vault 32 to build it back up. And everybody starts walking back into Vault 32. Only Chet and Norm know what they're walking into. But what comes as a big surprise to Norm and Chet is that when they walk back into Vault 32, it's been cleaned up. I mean, all the dead bodies, gone. The blood on the walls, painted over. Norm goes deeper and deeper into the vault, looking for any sign of what happened, but he doesn't find it. And when he goes to the overseer's office, he gets cornered by Betty, who says, Did you find anything interesting? And all he says is, great job cleaning up. Betty starts saying something about how the Raiders didn't break their spirits, and she starts walking off, but Norm stops her and says, hey, when my mother died, what happened to her pit boy? And Betty looks at him a little concerned and says, well, it was buried with her. I know this because I did it, along with your father. Now, up at the top, Lucy continues to track the head when she comes across something a little interesting. It's a Brotherhood of Steel armor. It was under attack by giant cockroaches, and when she opens it up, she's surprised because there's Maximus, clinging to life. Now, you might be wondering how Maximus found himself in this predicament. Well, it's because he and Thaddeus decided to make camp for the night at that location, and they were getting along really well. Eventually, Maximus revealed to Thaddeus who he was and how Knight Titus actually died. But instead of Thaddeus being okay with this, he wasn't. When it became obvious to Maximus that Thaddeus was planning on ratting him out, Maximus told him, I'm sorry, and went to go attack him. But in that bulky suit, Thaddeus was actually the quicker one, and he disengaged the suit and immobilized it completely, and that trapped Maximus inside. Thaddeus did get injured, but all in all, he's able to easily hobble away with all of the goods, including the head, which left Maximus there for dead. Maximus would have died had it not been for Lucy. And even though they ran into each other back in Philly, Lucy still is a little concerned about helping out Maximus. But Maximus is able to convince her that she should trust him because she's going through radiation poisoning and he's got something called Rataway, which helps combat radiation sickness. Lucy agrees to help him out. They exchange names, although Maximus does tell Lucy his name is Knight Titus. And shortly after Lucy frees Maximus, she faints from the radiation poisoning. And Maximus brings her back to health with the Rataway. Shortly after she comes to, he reveals to her that he didn't know anyone actually lived in those vaults. He's been told his entire life it was monsters, to which Lucy laughs at. But when Maximus tells her, all right, well, my squire stole something very valuable to me, she stops him and says, hey, how about we make a deal? I'm pretty sure everybody's after that head, and I have a tracker. So how about we work together, we find the head, and then you return to the Brotherhood. And in return for my help, 
I use four to five, maybe six Brotherhood members, and we go get my dad. Deal? And that's a deal that's too good for Maximus to pass up, so he agrees. And the two head off looking for this head. As they continue to walk and track the head and they make small talk about each other's lives and what exactly happened the last 200 years, they come across a bridge and two people across from it. Now, Maximus, he is very, very concerned. He doesn't know who these people are, and more importantly, he doesn't know what weapons they have. And they, in turn, are also concerned for the same reasons. They don't know who Maximus is, they don't know who Lucy is, and they don't know what kind of weapons they have. Lucy, though, she is completely ignorant to all of it. She just doesn't understand why these people can't be trusted and why they can't just simply walk by them on their way to find the head. She also doesn't understand how Maximus isn't trusting them when they say they don't have weapons. Because Maximus thinks they're lying, and in reality, he is also lying. He tells them, I don't have any weapons, and he clearly does. Eventually, just to try to figure this thing out and get along their way, both parties agree to put their hands up and slowly walk by each other. But this was just as Maximus predicted. The people were armed, and not only were they armed, they were fiends, which are people that eat people. And they were going to be after whatever Lucy and Maximus had, and then likely eat them for dinner. Luckily for Lucy, Maximus was there. He shot both of them, but he does end up taking a bullet for his troubles, although he plays it off as nothing more than just a graze. He's lying about that, too. It definitely went inside. Maximus tries to bandage it up, and they continue to walk on their way, and they get into a town called Shady Sands. And when Lucy sees the billboard for it, her mood changes. Because the billboard says, Welcome to Shady Sands, first capital of the new California Republic, population 34,000, established in 2142. The reason she is so depressed about this is because she's been living in the vault her entire life, and they've been told that their purpose was to repopulate the earth. And here you've got a sign saying that it's already been repopulated, that 34,000 people lived here at one point after the great bombs dropped. So the whole purpose of the vault was just a waste. And in order to make her feel better, Maximus says, I mean, if it makes you feel any better, it didn't work. Because the town is basically deserted. And then he walks her over to a giant hole in the ground that was caused by a bomb dropping. Yeah, after the first bombs dropped, more bombs dropped afterwards. When Lucy mentions, I wonder if anyone survived, Maximus says, yeah, I did. But before he can expound on that, he says we should keep moving, but he's clearly in pain. And that's when Lucy notices that that bullet graze is a bullet wound. He was lying about it the entire time. He's in rough shape, and she knows that he has to get him somewhere and get him some help, or else he's going to die. They continue to stumble along until they find something called the Hawthorne Medical Laboratories, a division of the vault Corporation. And Lucy wants to go in because she feels like that's the best bet in trying to find something that can help Maximus. But Maximus is reluctant to go in because he doesn't know what's in there. He tries to tell Lucy, hey, you should really be hesitant to do that, but she heads in anyway. And Maximus follows her in. And shortly after he enters the building, Lucy's nowhere to be found. So he's walking through pretty cautiously. At one point, he goes through one door, but it locks. And he can't get through the other door. He's trapped between these two doors. A siren starts going off. Smoke starts filling the room. And then the bottom drops out. When he eventually wakes up, Lucy is there with him. When he asks her, what is this place? She says, you're in the best place in the world. It's a vault. And sure enough, it is. They're looking through this glass, and they're seeing people walk through being productive members of this vault society. Thank you so much for checking out this recap. Please consider subscribing to the channel and subscribing to my Patreon. Hit thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that thumbs down button if you thought it sucked. If you left a comment, I don't get back to you. I usually don't check the comments unless they're like a super comment. Also, if you don't see the next video up on the end screen, not to worry. It'll be up in a day or two.